Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Zero Hiccup podcast, where today we have Gavin McDonald of Blue Side. Sorry for my hiccup because uh, Gavin recently changed his company name from Kitchak to Blue Side. And that would be my first question to start with. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, talk, uh, tell us more about uh, Blue Site and also cover like what led you to changing the company branding from Kitchak to Blue Site. Sure. At Blue Site, what we're focused on is what we call medication intelligence. And the idea is if inside the health system, we can get visibility to every drug that's flowing through from the time you're looking at purchasing something through the hospital and health system to the patient using that visibility and then simplifying and creating a more predictable world for uh, the health system pharmacist is kind of what we're all about. Uh, we renamed from Kitchak because Kitchak is actually one of the three products. So we're using RFID to track uh, medications primarily in procedural areas and crash carts and things like that. Um, but it's only a small piece of what we do. We are also looking at, you know, how do we prevent diversion in the health system and how do we help the health system purchase more effectively and save money on their drug spend? So um, it, we sort of outgrew the kit check name from a company perspective. And from there, we uh, ended up deciding to rename to Blue Site to, to reflect that. Cool. So uh, tell us more, Kevin, about the role of medication intelligence in addressing some of the challenges for healthcare industry. How does KitCheck technology help healthcare organizations improve their medication management process? Yeah, I mean, the health system is, is really pretty antiquated in terms of technology. And uh, if you look inside a hospital, there's a very complex supply chain that's going on. So uh, medications come from a number of different places and they get uh, transformed in different ways, perhaps put into IV bags or mixed into syringes and they can go up to the the floors via you know tubes like a bank that can go up uh, by being walked up then they're then they're stored in in cabinets and carts and in drawers and all sorts of different places so it's quite a complex uh, world that the health system pharmacist is dealing with and what we're trying to do is uh put in some technology that really helps bring visibility to what's going on and help the workflow in sort of three ways help the pharmacy um, lower their costs because drugs are the most expensive operating cost of a, of a health system, help the uh, health system be more efficient with their staff. Um, labor shortages are a huge issue these days, particularly with technician staff. So how do we help them be a lot faster and, and be able to focus on the clinical care that we're try they're trying to provide? And then how do we help with safety and compliance? So like one of the big areas there again, is diversion. There's uh, a lot of research out there that says about one in 12 nurses, anesthesia providers, and pharmacists are um, diverting narcotics. And being able to get ahead of that and understand what's going on is important to everyone's safety. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, Kevin, tell me more about uh, like uh, how uh, Blue Site is part of the overall health hospital process like is it does it integrate with the uh, existing workflows or is it in itself uh, providing a solution as a workflow management software yeah i mean we we sort of enhance existing workflows so for example in rfid that you might be manually checking little vials and looking at expiration dates and we're just automating that process but then we're also integrating with existing systems so whether it's your your wholesalers and understanding what are you purchasing and how much you can purchase at what sort of price or whether it's your electronic medical records and understanding what's getting uh, administered to patients or your dispensing cabinets and understanding what's out on the floors and getting dispensed there. What we're trying to do is create this medication intelligence software layer that sort of sits above it all and again helps you be more efficient, safer and uh, save money. Okay, okay. So tell us more about, uh, you know, your view of the biggest challenges facing the healthcare industry in 2023, and how do you see technology playing a role in addressing those challenges? Yeah, I mean, right now there's a huge labor shortage in healthcare, particularly with technician staff. So the hospitals are having a very hard time uh, filling positions and that it's costing a, a lot more. So being able to have a predictable set of workflows that's more efficient 
uh, and technology that drives that is huge. Um, also with inflation in general, just costs are up. So anything that's um, able to help you better understand what, what does your spend look like and how do I lower my costs is, is, is super important. And as we know, the opioid crisis is um, right. unfortunately not going anywhere and getting to be a bigger and bigger issue. So helping the, the health system prevent the opioid crisis within their four walls is, is super important. So what we're seeing in terms of macro trends are, you know, things that are in other industries that are just uh, exacerbated in the healthcare. So things like, you know, labor and labor shortages, inflation, and uh, the opioid crisis. Okay. And then, uh, you know, just elaborating on this one further. So uh, what are the most important technology strategies that you would recommend healthcare organization of today to, you know, look into right away in 2023? Yeah, I mean, healthcare in some ways is, you know, 10 plus years behind most other industries, just in terms of um, moving to the cloud, for example, and really leveraging the power of the internet. Um, in a lot of health systems, the data is sort of trapped at the health system and being able to leverage the strength of being part of a bigger ecosystem of health systems is is something that um, trend wise is important you know also just being able to use things like uh, machine learning and uh, big data sort of approaches will help the the health system better understand what's going on so for example, in the electronic medical records it's just a, a massive amount of data but it's it's mostly trapped and it's very hard to get at. So um, being able to unlock that and understand what's going on, there's, there's a huge amount of opportunity to both provide better care at a lower cost and more effective care. But in order to do that, we first need to sort of make sense of what data is there and make sense of what we can do to improve. So that gets back to creating intelligence around, you know, more visibility, creating simplicity in the workflows and some better predictability along the way. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, makes sense. So uh, when you say, you know, that healthcare is 10 years behind, uh, do you see that, uh, you know, the latest of the technologies like AI, ML, or computer vision, they may still take some time to become a bit more substantial for healthcare? Or do you think that times have changed and latest technologies would now, uh, you know, like be more uh, approachable in healthcare or be more applicable in healthcare? I, I think the healthcare uh, systems are starting to adopt it. Uh, you know, for example, in our uh, control check product, we're using AI and machine learning to detect where are their unusual or anomalous behaviors of different mm -hmm. providers. Um, but I would say that uh, healthcare tends to be a little more skeptical of new technology and wants to sort of see it, uh, whereas other other industries are are more apt to try it quicker. So, you know, I think what you'll end up seeing is you'll you'll see an increase in adoption of the different technologies. But um, you know, it, it, it's going to take time. Healthcare systems are typically laggers in terms of technology. Um, and bringing that that new technology to bear is uh, it, it takes some time. What we found um, so we we started uh, our first hospitals went live ten years ago, and at the time uh, having something in the cloud and having something SaaS based was you know kind of scary for the health system, and now it's become much more normal. But uh, you know if you look at other industries. You know, it was probably seven to 10 years behind where other industries went. And I, I think you've seen a similar trend. And what we're, what we are tending to see now is now that we have gotten um, into the cloud, now that we've started to introduce things like AI and machine learning, the health systems are starting to get the benefits of that, which are not just, you know, smarter systems, but systems that update themselves that, you know, stay more up to date. You know, so much of the technology that's in the hospital, whether it's the dispensing cabinets or the electronic medical records, um, you know, they use older approaches to how do they upgrade and things like that. And it means that everything kind of goes out of date faster. Um, so being able to make that step change to the cloud and make that step change to things like AI and machine learning and big data allows the health system to get onto a ramp where things stay up to date a little longer. But I think it's going to take several more years before, you know, we start to see convergence between uh, the health systems and other industries. Okay. 
fair enough i think it's a fair assessment so we'll change a bit of gears here and uh, kevin would like to know more about you and uh, blue side so uh, can you talk us to the blue side journey and also you know the different offerings that you you know you've started offering and uh, how you came up to these ideas uh, please elaborate sure so um i started the company in 2011 and the my background is in technology and supply chain and saw that uh, the medication supply chain in the us is probably one of the most screwed up things that we've seen and it, it's due to a lot of similar to a lot of things in the healthcare system where there's so many layers of intermediaries and regulation that create a level of opacity so i was having dinner with a friend of my wife and she was um talking about her day and how she was on crash cart duty and it was a very manual process where people would pick up vials and look at expiration dates and it was the worst job in the pharmacy and uh i thought about that and i said you know there's there's a good use of rfid technology there and uh, decided to go ahead and start the business with my co-founder tim and we had our first hospitals go live in uh 2012. so from there what we learned was there are huge issues particularly in the perioperative space around managing medications and getting visibility to medications and things like that and that's where we uh, learned over time that there's this other problem around diversion and uh, providers um, taking narcotics and using them or selling them. So we had a, a special view into the operating room, which is a particularly difficult place to track because it's the only place in the hospital where the same person dispenses orders and administers uh, drugs. So um, we started work on there. We released a product called uh, now called control check that helps the hospitals better understand where are their uh, unusual behaviors uh, to be investigated in terms of risk. And then, um, you know, our providers are mainly pharmacists and the pharmacy is a lot of times driven from on high bot based on what does the drug spend look like? Because it's such a huge piece of the ho hospital's operating budget. So we brought cost check into the market to help the hospital better understand where can they um, save money or where can they optimize spend either by buying something different or perhaps uh, using the systems they have more effectively to drive out costs in the system. So um, it's been a long ride. More than a thousand hospitals are on our systems now, um, but uh, it's been rewarding to see people you know, get value and uh, we have a, a great customer fan base. So it's been uh, fun along the ride, a uh, fun ride along the way. Nice. So, uh, you know, I know from, uh, you know, experiences shared by other healthcare founders that, uh, you know, healthcare uh, is always an industry which is hard to crack, especially if you are a startup, like, you know, during your early days, or uh, it's difficult to get your first customer or first five customers. So yeah. looking back, Kevin, would you like to share some of your own story, your lessons to fellow healthcare founders, like, you know, how to go about it if you are a startup today? Sure. Um, look, it wasn't easy. And I, honestly, if I knew today uh, what I knew then in terms of how difficult it was to sell the health systems, I'm not sure I would have started the company. But um, I ended up, a lot of it's just kind of like hard work. So I ended up uh, early days when I had the idea, um, as we were considering building it, I basically cold called hospitals because I didn't have any context at all. And I, I sort of pitched, hey, what if you could have a system that did this? And mm -hmm. um, I got some amazing feedback that, you know, that would be incredible. And people didn't think it was possible to check a crash cart in, you know, a few seconds kind of thing. And based on that feedback, I then said, yeah, this is worth doing. But a lot of it was basically just calling, demoing, and just, you know, doing just raw outreach to uh, hundreds of different hospitals, see who would, who would be the first to, to bite. Um, and we were fortunate to have, uh, a couple of hospitals, uh, take the leap. And then once you have a couple, then it gets a little bit easier in terms of referenceability. Although we had to change the business model a little bit. Um, and then we were able to do some trade shows. In fact, this trade show, uh, last week, ASHP mid-year, 
where we renamed the company to Blue Site. It was the 10 year anniversary of us going to that uh, trade show for the first right. time. Uh, both times were in Vegas. So it was kind of fun to see it go from a, a little 10 by 10 booth. And we were sort of this uh, magic trick almost of checking a, a crash cart in seconds to, uh, you know, more than a hospital, more than a thousand hospitals on multiple medication intelligence systems. Okay. So during your product development journey, Kevin, like how long did it take for you to, uh, you know, like know your product market fit? So were you already aware that this need exists and hospitals are game for it at the start or it took some iteration? Um, we, so we started the company in 2011. The first hospitals went live in 2012. Um, and it didn't really start taking off until 2013. And that was, the product was uh, clearly something that was a need and clearly filled a role. The challenge was the sort of budgeting cycle and how that worked. Um, the things that prevent health systems from purchasing good new technology are primarily legal IT and budget. And um, getting into the capital budget is super difficult. Uh, so we were able to rework the model so we didn't require a capital budget. We had specifically architected the technology so it didn't require IT involvement. Um, and from a legal perspective, we tried to make the contracts as simple as humanly possible. So um, that was a, a sort of special focus, but it took us you know, more than a year to figure that out. Okay. And today, Kevin, how large is your team uh, and how is it set up? You mentioned to me you're already all remote. Uh, so is everybody in the U.S. or you even have a staff worldwide? How is it set up? Yeah, so we have about 150 people now. And we're wow. all remote all over the, the U.S. We are um, pretty much all, we are all in the U.S. Um, that way, if we need to go to a customer site or something like that, we can. Um, on some of the products, we also deal with uh, protected health information. So there's oftentimes sensitivity around where people are located and dealing with that. Um, but uh, yeah, we as long as people are in the lower 48, we're um, pretty flexible as to where they are. And that's worked out pretty well. Great. So, uh, Kevin, in your journey of 10 years, uh, would you like to share, like, what is the most interesting uh, use case where you implemented, uh, you know, your solution and kind of really got excited with the results that came out? Any interesting stories that you'd like to share today? I mean, there, there's so many stories over the years. I remember there was one hospital on Kitchak we walked into uh, during the sales cycle, and the very first cart I pulled up and there was a drug that was had expired 13 years prior and knowing that by putting the solution in we were solving that issue that was that was meaningful on the control side um we've had I've had situations where uh heads of pharmacy have called us up and uh said hey you know we were able to detect a a diversion situation happening um that you know frankly we were unaware of but uh, we were able to get to that much earlier than we might have done. Um, and actually, there was a study, an academic study that showed that in some cases we are finding things more than six months earlier. So preventing all of the, the tragedy that could have happened in that the intervening six months has been rewarding. And it's always fun to see on the cost side, um, you know, I, I actually send out daily to our, our team an update. And with that update, I'll talk about sort of different savings uh, that have happened. And occasionally what you'll see is we'll save a hospital uh, more than a million dollars in one shot. On average, we're, we're saving people more than a million dollars a year. But uh, there's times where it's like this particular drug was uh, mispriced for a health system. And uh, you see, boom, the rebate comes back and, uh, you know, moving the the needle a couple million dollars for a health system is is meaningful, and it allows right. them to do much better care. Makes sense. So my last question, uh, Kevin, uh, because again we are sitting in December, so this question is so much more relevant. Uh, what are the three top technology trends or ideas that you are bullish on in 2023 and 2024? Yeah. So I think that. Um, in terms of market trends, there's there's a lot of focus on sort of supply chain. And I would say that in terms of supply chains, the the 
drug supply chain is uh, among one of the most screwed up out there. So being able to provide some uh, visibility and technology that spans supply chain partners is going to be a, a pretty big deal. Um, in terms of just sort of raw underlying technology, look, we're making a bunch of moves to sort of serverless kind of computing and uh, being able to sort of scale more with, with those sorts of technologies, which is exciting. It's going to allow us to, uh, you know, not have to worry about uh, different instances of service or containers or things like that. Um, and then continued development in terms of analytics and AI and machine learning are, are, are super interesting. Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and I believe uh, a lot of our viewers will definitely get a takeaway from this uh, conversation that we had. Thank you. It was, it was great speaking with you this morning. Thanks.